All right, so at long last, after multiple failed attempts, I can finally present this beast of a puzzle, the 13 layer pyraminx. This thing is a pretty hefty step up from the Emperor Pyraminx, which is a seven layer. Um, this is this is taking this is taking Pyraminx to places it just hasn't gone before. So unfortunately, like a lot of pyramids, Things are pretty good at the top and get progressively worse as you go down. This Pyraminx is no exception. Um, trivial tips turn just fine. <laughs> I'd be in serious trouble if they didn't because these, these are kind of hard to mess up. But the first few layers are actually pretty smooth. Um, they work nice. But then they start getting a little bit, a little bit more catchy, a little bit more hampered by those magnets, which are really necessary for keeping this thing aligned, but they also make quite a bit of clicking and like momentum that needs to be overcome. Outermost layers are kind of catchy. They take a bit to get started. They tend to click a little bit, but they're not too bad. Overall, I'd say it's about as bad as the 22 by 22 in terms of turning, uh, which is saying a lot because that puzzle didn't turn very well either. Um, but for for such an experimental puzzle, uh, I can't complain too much. Due to all the metal in this puzzle, it weighs in at 2,000. 552 grams. That is roughly equivalent to two 7x7s, seven a scube, a 5x5, 4x4, 3x3, corner turning 5x5, five five, godly Sheng Shao, a pure minx, 5x5 five five again, 3x3, three three, mega minx, 7x7, seven seven, two more 7x7s, seven world's smallest 5x5, five five, and one more pure minx. Due to the geometry of the pieces, Every single centerpiece in this puzzle is actually held together by magnets. So here is a chunk of the centers. As you can see, they hold together just fine. Um, every single piece has these little two by six millimeter neodymium magnets, and they're all equally spaced too. So during a turn, they, uh, they sort of click multiple times. So each turn has a little click. They, they dislocate and then they'll click into a new position a couple times throughout a turn. This does add quite a bit of friction as you might imagine with this layer right here. You have a ton of magnets that need to be overcome and these are a lot stronger than the kind of magnets you use on most speed cubes in order to improve with the layer alignment. And it's because that these um, serve kind of a different purpose. They're not really designed for aligning the layers. They're, they're designed for aligning every single centerpiece um, in perfect uh, alignment. And, and it really does. You can see that even uh, removed from the puzzle, all of these pieces are laid exactly how they need to be. And this is a complete necessity with this puzzle. Without these magnets, this puzzle basically doesn't work. Uh, it's technically fully functional, but it, the, the turning quality is extremely poor. And it has to do with the geometry of the centerpieces. Uh, Triangle-shaped cubies are inherently a lot less stable than square or rhombus-shaped cubies. And since no puzzle with triangle-shaped cubies of this scale had ever been attempted before, um, the fundamental issue with them hasn't really come up too much. I mean, you see it a little bit with the Royal Pyraminx, but this uh, takes it to just such an extreme that adding over, well over a thousand magnets into this puzzle was necessary in order for it to pretty much function at all. I ended up cutting the stickers for this puzzle myself using a plotting machine, which actually saved a lot of time because I went through multiple iterations of this puzzle and went through many sticker sets. So 
uh, cutting them myself, being able to cut them on demand, definitely saved a lot of time and money on a project this big. So I'll probably be doing so for all future puzzles as well, which means probably not going to be doing any stickerless puzzles for a while. All right, so here is what this puzzle looks like in the spiral pattern, uh, the staircase pattern, I guess some people call it. This puzzle just looks so cool when it's in these mid turns. Uh, it's just, it's got a really interesting, it's almost like kind of a flower like quality to it. Uh, I also really like how these triangles end up kind of aligning and you get these these spirally lines that kind of go through. It is just a, a bizarre and weird puzzle to look at. Of course, it can also be spiraled with multiple different tips, uh, and that also creates some very interesting looking patterns. And of course, this video wouldn't be complete without scrambling the puzzle. Now, scrambling took 40 minutes, which is a ridiculously long time. Uh, the turning quality obviously really uh, limiting how quickly this puzzle can move, but it can be scrambled uh, and it didn't pop or anything, so that's a success in my book. You might be notice, uh, wondering why the center caps keep falling off. I eventually do plan on gluing them in. Uh, they're just meant to be kind of a temporary little thing. There's there's screws inside those centers, and you might notice that those screws don't actually screw into the core. They're sort of floating centers. That's because the core of this puzzle is based on a skew with the four corners, the four actual corners of this tetrahedron being four of the skew corners uh, that attach to the core in a skew, and the the centers being uh, the other four corners of a skew that do not actually uh, connect to the core. They just kind of float. I do plan on attempting to solve this puzzle. I'm not really sure if it's going to be a success or not. I, I'd imagine it takes several hours, uh, but stay tuned because I will be making a video uh, of that attempt, whether it goes well or not. And with that, I think I'll wrap up this video. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, this puzzle was really fun to work on. I plan on doing more of these record-breaking type puzzles in the future, so stay tuned.